In this Q&A video made in association with IDAC Solutions, we'll be answering the question, do I need to fuse down a buzz bar connection if I'm connecting to a smaller cable? Now, this video relates to the fascinating content produced by Gordon and Gary on the Verts cable system that can simplify installation work. For example, where you've got maybe several EV charge points installed around a car park. The idea is that you have a flat cable mounted on the wall and then you can tap off it using specific connectors that screw through the outer sheath and the insulation. So it's very much like a buzz bar arrangement. Now one question that was brought up was that the conductors connected from the tap off point down to the charge point had a smaller cross sectional area than the conductors in the flat cable and there's no fuse in the connector to protect that smaller conductor. So have Gary and Gordon messed up? Or is there another explanation? Well, let's think about it logically. What kind of protection do we need to offer to this conductor once it leaves the flat cable? Fundamentally, we need to provide overload and fault protection. So we need to stop the load from drawing more current than the conductor can handle and to disconnect if a short circuit or an earth fault occurs. Now let's think about overload first. Normally, we like to see an overload device at the point where the conductor size changes. The classic example being a consumer unit. The thick buzz bar goes into the bottom of the MCB and the spindly, delicate lighting conductor comes out of the other side protected at, say, 6 amps. Or perhaps we may think of a plug top where we go from the 2.5mm squared behind the socket to the flex that comes out of the plug protected by maybe a 13 amp, 5 amp or 3 amp fuse. And it's fair to say that's good practice and it means that we can avoid some challenges. But it's not the only way we can provide overload protection to a conductor. Chapter 43 of BS7671 covers protection against overcurrent. Section 433 deals with overload current and 433.2 deals with the position of devices for protection against overload. 443.2.1 states, except where regulation 433.2.2 or 433.3 applies, a device for protection against overload shall be installed at the point where a reduction occurs in the value of the current carrying capacity of the conductors of the installation. Seems simple enough. Put the fuse or MCB where the cable gets smaller, right? So how come we didn't need to do that with the tap-off point on the Verts cable system? Well, that regulation mentions exceptions to this rule, one of which is in 443.2.2, which reads, the device protecting a conductor against overload may be installed along the run of that conductor if the part of the run between the point where a change occurs, in our case in cross-sectional area, and the position of the protective device has neither branch circuits nor outlets for connection of current using equipment and fulfills at least one of the following conditions. Indent one, it is protected against fault current in accordance with the requirements stated in section 434. Indent two, its length does not exceed three meters. It is installed in such a manner as to reduce the risk of fault to a minimum and it is installed in such a manner as to reduce to a minimum the risk of fire or danger to persons. So this regulation is telling us that the overload protection device doesn't have to go at the point where the change in cable size occurs. It can go somewhere along the length of the smaller cable. Now, if you think about that from an overload point of view, this makes perfect sense because the section of cable before the protective device can never have more current flowing through it due to being overloaded, as the protective device will prevent that from happening. Now, with the charging point that was used in the video that Gordon and Gary made, there is overload protection provided in the EV charger, and so we can apply this regulation. However, we do still need to meet one of the two indents, and these are really addressing the issue of fault current, as in what's going to protect the cable if two of the conductors touch each other or a live touches earth. Well, we can apply indent two in this case because the length of the drop to the charging point is less than three meters long. But what about the rest of that reg? If you can install the cable so that the risk of a fault, fire, or danger to a person is reduced to a minimum, then you can still have the protective device along the smaller conductor instead of at the beginning. It points us to regulation 434.2.1 where we find a little bit of advice in this note which tells us that we can reduce the risk of fault to a minimum by, for example, reinforcing the protection of the wiring against external influences. 
So by providing extra protection to the conductors between the tap-off point and the charge point to prevent faults occurring, we can use the provision in regulation 433.2.2 to place the protective device in the charging unit. Now, another thing just to bear in mind if this is perhaps still troubling you a little bit, just think about this, you may well be able to meet both indents one and two of regulation 433.2.2 as the device protecting your main distribution cable may well be sufficient to provide fault protection for your tap-off cable as well. Careful planning and calculation at the design stage may well mean that the tap-off cable will have sufficient fault protection. So it may seem a little unusual to be placing protective devices in positions that aren't at the start of a circuit, but there is an allowance to do it and still keep your circuits compliant and safe. Of course, as always, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this topic. Do you feel comfortable using tap-off points with overload protection at the load end? Or do you have further questions about this type of application? If so, then please leave your questions and comments in the relevant section below. All that remains in this video is to say, Thank you very much for watching.